Today we'll talk about plasma surface modification, the use of plasmas for fabricating photovoltaic cells. We'll talk about the trends in the industry relative to those fabrications. We'll talk about atmospheric dry plasma surface treatment, APT, and its modification effects on those type of materials. We'll talk about how surface preparation and cleaning can take place using this technology and how to exactly prescribe the effect that you need to get on those materials using that technology. And then we'll conclude with some application optimization recommendations. Today, plasma surface modification technology in PV cell manufacturing takes one specific form, and that is the use of vacuum plasmas in the deposition of different types of layers, typically amorphous layers, utilizing plasma-enhanced chemical vapor deposition processes. There is the applying of anti-reflective coatings and surface passivation coatings on thin film solar, and there's also etching being done for edge isolation. However, the use of vacuum plasma technologies will obviously bring chemical waste disposal issues into the fore. That's why there's a new interest in dry technology, technology which will etch the surface in a dry manner, provide the same type of cleaning effects and adhesion promotion that's required. That's why a fresh investigation into this type of new atmospheric and continuous technology is really warranted. The use of these plasmas is really dependent on the type of material that is being treated and the cycle time of that process. Uh, unfortunately, vacuum plasmas do not create that bridge to high volume continuous processing. It's typically a batch process and can work in semi-continuous mode, but you do have to work on exchanging the materials and returning to a one atmosphere in order to use those materials. It's not an economical process in the end for high throughput etching, cleaning, and functionalizing. The trends in the industry are really to move towards thin film. It is the fastest growing segment of the PV technology uh, industry. Between 2006 and 2015, the compound annual growth rate among all of the uh, types of PV technologies uh, is led by thin film at about 75%. Uh, the reason is because there's a cost advantage relative to using thin film. It reduces the amount of light absorption material required. It allows for a shorter payback period. And the coefficient uh, relative to temperature is more stable with increasing temperature. There's also a trend towards the use of organic thin film solar cells on plastic materials. Typically, organic-based materials are dissolved within carriers such as solvents or inks and then printed or coated onto the plastic substrate in a roll-to-roll -roll regime. It's less expensive than using silicon, cadmium, or tellurium, and its prototypes are now in production. An example of a construction that typically use a, a plastic carrier includes a top layer of plastic, a coating of a pre-polymer adhesive, and then conductive layers followed by additional coatings and the application of a polyester film with a silicon oxide coating. Another example is to use organic inks, and these inks will allow actual, actually like electrons pass to an electrically conductive polymer layer onto the plastic substrate. So there's a wide range of materials that are being used uh, in the development of flexible solar uh, to maximize their efficiency. There are opportunities to integrate a continuous inline process, not only for flexible, but for rigid flexible. And there's this utilization of atmospheric gas phase plasmas, which allow you to use variable chemistries to activate dissimilar materials to improve efficiencies. There are a number of different regimes for the use of atmospheric plasma. The upper left corner is an atmospheric plasma discharge over a flexible substrate. Uh, in the upper right corner, you have a variable chemistry plasma being projected for more three-dimensional surfaces, as is the technology to the lower right. And the technology to the lower left is a technology using ion distributions or ion discharges 
that will create an effect uh, that is similar to cleaning and promote the adhesion to a surface. The use of atmospheric plasma technology is based on the fact that it is the fourth state of matter. It is a mixture of different types of species, ions and electrons primarily, generally in equilibrium, meaning that they are in a state that is not negative, not positive, but neutral. This plasma soup is again constructed of different types of species including photons and ions and electrons. Uh, there is the oxygen molecule that is associating and disassociating within that plasma and ultimately creating a bombardment to the surface of the material being treated. So the recipe for creating that type of a surface effect is for instance to take a photon, liberating it from a gas molecule, and then accelerating that species into the electrical field where it collides with other gas molecules and then on the basis of kinetic energy uh, frees more electrons and ultimately creates an avalanche of electrons to the surface of the material creating a change. This animation actually gives you a better representation of what's going on. We have reactive gas molecules that are bombarding the surface, knocking off low molecular weight organics such as water and other types of absorbed gases and other types of fragments and, and contaminations that are on the surface, exposing a clean surface that can be treated with a variable chemistry that ultimately can impart and create a bondable substrate. The surface becomes activated by a free radical effect and then ultimately the deposition of specific types of chemistry, hydroxyl, carbonyl, carboxyl, carboxylic, amino carboxyl, and other types of groups are induced to the surface to create the bond that's required. More animation here demonstrates other types of pathways to creating a chemical bond at the surface specifically of polyolefins which we know are composed of carbon and hydrogen species. The reactions that take place at the surface initiate a bond after atomic oxygen is, or reactive atomic oxygen, is created at the surface. That abstracts a hydrogen atom from the surface and then ultimately creates a surface that can react with other materials to create a bond. So in addition to ketone groups that are created at the surface, there are also aldehyde groups, carboxyl, hydroperoxide groups, and others that can be created at the surface. There's also an oxidative effect because we're in atmosphere, and so creating that effect will result in a breaking of the polymer chains at the surface of the polymer and removal. You can also prescribe specific functionalizations relative to those surfaces under control of an atmospheric plasma system. Now it's one thing to assert that there's going to be an effect at the surface chemically and then it's another to actually show that effect. Here we have an XPS spectrum of untreated PTE, I'm sorry, PTFE material and that material shows the CF2 groups that are present. After treatment it's possible to impart CH2 groups or any other types of groups at the surface by simply changing the chemistry of that particular gas phase discharge on any material uh, to create the presence of those uh, functionalized groups on the surface. And as you can see in this particular graph, there are many types of functionalities that can be created with just a slight change in the gas chemistry composition. And that's what creates peak broadening among the different types of materials that are being examined. 